All right, this is 2.4 notes. We're going to learn about the imaginary unit, so I. Each complex number can be written in the standard form where we have A plus BI, so that is our real number comes first, and then the imaginary number comes second. This is our standard form when dealing with complex numbers. Our complex number I comes from the square root of negative 1. So the square root of negative 1 is I. So in the past, I said can't take square root of a negative because that will give us imaginary numbers. So that's where that I comes from. And then also a little helpful hint that we'll see in some of the examples today is if we square both sides of our equation here. The squared and the square root cancel, so I'd just be left with negative 1 is equal to i squared. So anytime we see an i squared, that can change into the real number, negative 1. So we're going to see some of those examples in the next few slides. Here we have the definition of a complex number. So it says if a and b are real numbers, then the imaginary number a plus b i is a complex number because it has that i in it. And it's said to be written in standard form. If b is equal to 0, then the number a plus b i is just a because if b was 0, it would get rid of that imaginary part. And then it would be a real number. If b does not equal 0, then the number a plus b i is called an imaginary number. So if that i is there, it's imaginary. And a number of the form b i where b does not equal 0 is called a pure imaginary number. So that wouldn't have like the real part with it. We're going to skip this slide, so don't worry about it. Next, we have the equality of complex numbers. So if we have two complex numbers, a plus bi and c plus di, if they're equal to each other, that means the real parts are equal to each other and the imaginary parts are equal to each other. So a and c are going to be the same number, and b and d are going to be the same number. So that's if we have two imaginary numbers that are equal to each other. Now let's look at some examples. So when we are adding, we just add the real numbers together and then add the imaginary numbers together. And then we just have to be sure that we write it in standard form. So since I'm just adding these, I could ignore the parentheses around it. So I have 3 minus i plus 2 plus 3i. I'm going to add my real parts together. So that's 3 plus 2, which is 5. And add my imaginary parts. So negative i plus 3i, which would be 2i. And that's our answer written in standard form. So you kind of just treat the i as if it were a variable like x. Here we have negative 1, whatever, i, and here we have 3. So we just add the coefficients in front of it. So we just treat the i as if it were a variable. When subtracting imaginary numbers or when subtracting anything that has a binomial in it, we just have to make sure we distribute that negative inside the parentheses that come after it. So we have 1 plus 2i minus 4 minus 2i. So we've got to distribute that negative to both things in that parentheses. We want to combine our real numbers together. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And then combine our imaginary numbers together. So this would be 2 minus 2i, which is just 0. So our answer is just negative 3. In example C, again here we are subtracting, so we want to distribute that negative to both things in the parentheses after it. So I have 3 negative times negative becomes positive, minus 3i, plus that would be minus 5, because it's negative 5, plus i. So we want to combine our real numbers together. I have 3 plus 2 minus 5. So they actually end up canceling out because 3 plus 2 would be 5, and 5 minus 5 is just 0. And then I want to add my imaginary numbers together. So I have negative 3 plus i. So that would be negative 2i. And then for d, I need to distribute here. So I'm going to rewrite it, 3 plus 2i plus 4 minus i minus 7 minus i. I need to combine all my real numbers together, so I have 3, 4, minus 7. So 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 minus 7 
is 0, so they end up just canceling each other out. And then I have 2i minus i minus i. So here, they would end up canceling each other out too, so then I'd just be left with 0. All right, in example 2, we are multiplying complex numbers. So here, we need to distribute. So 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. 5 times 3i would be plus 15i. So you can multiply, just like I could multiply a number to a number that has a variable, I can do the same thing with imaginary numbers. I can distribute, and it's fine. And then I don't have any like terms that I need to combine, and it's already written in standard form, so that would be my answer. For b, I'm going to have to FOIL since I have two binomials. So multiply the first ones together, multiply the outsides, multiply the insides, and then multiply the last. So this would be minus 3i squared because I have i times 3i. And then I want to combine my like terms. I'm going to rewrite it over here just so I have more room. So 8, I have 6i minus 4i. So that would be plus 2i minus 3i squared. Now, i squared, we know changes into negative 1. So this is like saying 3 times negative 1, which it's actually negative 3. So negative 3 times negative 1, which becomes a positive 3. So then I have 8 plus 3, because that i squared goes away, because i squared is negative 1. So it turned into this. Now I can combine 8 plus 3, which is 11, and then plus 2i, and that's my answer. All right, now looking at c, we have to FOIL again. So multiply the first terms together. I have 9, the outsides, negative 6i, the insides, positive 6i, and then the last, negative 4i squared. Combine my like terms. Negative 6i and 6i cancel out. So this would be 9. The i squared here turns into negative 1, so minus 4 times negative 1. Negative 4 times negative 1 becomes positive 4, so 9 plus 4. 9 plus 4 would be 13. That's my answer. Let's look at D. So here I just need to distribute. So I have 4i times negative 1, which becomes negative 4i. And then 4i times 5i would be plus 20i squared. So i squared turns into negative 1. So this is negative 4i plus 20 times negative 1. So this becomes a negative 20. And then I need to make sure I write it in standard form. So I have negative 20 minus 4i. So you have to rewrite it in standard form. Now let's look at e. So this is like saying 3 plus 2i times 3 plus 2i. So I have to FOIL. So multiply the first ones, the outsides, the insides, and the last. Combine your like terms. I have 9 plus 12i. 4i squared, the i squared turns into a negative 1, so this becomes minus 4. And then 9 minus 4 is 5 plus 12i. So I just combine my like terms, and that's it. Next, we're going to look at complex conjugates. So it says, notice an example to see the product of two complex numbers can be a real number. That's when we had the example 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 2i. So when we multiplied this out, we ended up with 13, which was a real number. So this happens when you multiply conjugates. Conjugates mean that we have the positive and the negative being multiplied to each other. So when we FOIL this out, we end up canceling out the i's. So in example 3, it says multiply each complex number by its complex conjugate. So the complex conjugate 
of 1 plus i would be 1 minus i. So we have to FOIL. 1 times 1 is 1. Multiply the outsides, that would be negative i. The insides, positive i. And then the last, minus i squared. So the i's cancel. And then the minus i squared, i squared turns into negative 1. So this would end up becoming positive 1. So it's 1 plus 1, which would be 2. Because this was a negative minus. A negative times negative 1, which becomes a positive 1. All right, for b, our conjugate of 4 minus 3i would be 4 plus 3i. So again, we FOIL. First terms, outsides, insides, last, minus 9i squared. So our middle terms cancel. Plus 12i and minus 12i cancel. And then the i squared turns into negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 9 becomes a positive 9. So here I'm adding 16 plus 9, which would be 25. Another way we can multiply conjugates, which you probably learned in Algebra 2, if we had 4 minus 3i times 4 plus 3i. You can just square the first term and square the second one and subtract what you get. So 4 squared would be 16 minus 3i squared. So we're squaring this whole thing. So this would be 9i squared. Because middles end up getting canceled out. So you're just squaring the first one, squaring the last one. And then i squared changes this into a plus 9. So this would be 25. So it's just a different way of multiplying conjugates. You don't have to FOIL it all out because it'll always work where this squared and this squared, the difference of them, so if you subtract them, that's what you would get when you multiply conjugates. So it's kind of like a shortcut. So whenever we have a negative under our square root, we can always take it out of the square root and turn it into an i. This book puts the i behind the square root, but I always put it in front, like i square root a, just so we can see that that i is still not under the square root. So anytime you have a negative in the square root, you can always take it out, move it to the front, and turn it into an i. In example five, we're multiplying and subtracting our complex numbers. So looking at a, they turned the square root of negative three and the square root of negative 12 into square root three i and square root 12 i. So we're just multiplying these together. So we can multiply i times i, which would be i squared. And then square root three times square root 12, we can combine those together under the same radical. And then once we're here, we can break it down. So I have i squared. This is 3 times 12 breaks down into 3 times 4. And we can break 4 down into 2 times 2. So I have a pair of 3s and a pair of 2s. So i squared would turn into negative 1. I can take out a 3, take out a 2. So I have 1 times 3 times 2, which would be negative For the next one, I can only subtract my square roots if I had the same square root. So if I had like i square root 3 minus i square root 3, like the square roots have to be the same. And the I, they both have to have i's because if not, they would not be like terms. So let's see if we can get these to have the same radical. It's okay if they have different coefficients out front, but what's under the square root has to be the same if we want to subtract. So I can break 48 down into 4 and 12. 4 is 2 and 2. 12 is 4 and 3. So this would be 2, 2, 2, 2, 3. And then 27, I can break down into 9 and 3. And this would be 3 and 3. 
So circle my pairs. I have a pair of twos, a pair of twos, and three left over. So two twos come on the outside. Two times two is four. And then I'm left with square root three. So that three doesn't have a pair, so it has to stay on the inside. And I'm just going to rewrite my i instead of putting it behind. I'm going to put it in front there. So I have four i square root three. Here, I have a pair of threes. So a three is going to come out to the outside. And then I'm left with a three on the inside also. So now that my radicals are the same, I have square root three, square root three, I can combine these together. So just like how I would combine my variables, I just add the coefficients. Here I have four minus three, which would just be one. So you don't have to write the one as the coefficient. It would just be i square root three. All right, for the next one, we're gonna look at this. It's asking us to square it. So this is like saying negative one plus square root i square root three, because I like to write the i in front, times negative one plus i square root three, because we're squaring it. Be super careful. People made this mistake on the first quiz and test that they squared this and squared this. You can't do it that way. It's the whole polynomial, the whole binomial squared. So you have to make sure that you foil it. So multiply our first terms. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. The outsides would be negative i square root 3. The insides would be negative i square root 3. And then the last terms would be i square root 3 times i square root 3. So I have i times i, which would be i squared. And square root 3 times square root 3 would be square root 9. And we know square root 9 is whole number 3. So this would be 3i squared. So now I can combine my like terms. I know that this i squared turns into negative 1. And negative 1 times 3 would make this a negative 3. So I have whole number and whole number, real number and real number. 1 minus 3 would be negative 2. And then I can add my imaginary numbers together. That would be negative i square root 3 minus i square root 3. So that would be minus 2i square root 3. And that's my answer. So here we have our last two examples we just have to solve. So looking at our first equation here, x squared plus 4 is equal to 0. Since I only have 1x in my equation, I can just subtract 4 on both sides. So x squared is equal to negative 4. Take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to any time you take the square root of both sides, you need that plus or minus. Because I have a negative under my radical, that comes out as an i. And then I know the square root of 4 is 2. So I want to write my coefficient in front. So that would be 2i. So my answer is x is equal to plus or minus 2i. All right, b. So this actually factors... So I'm going to change the example to be 4 instead of 2. That way it doesn't factor, and that way we can practice doing our quadratic formula. Since this deals with quadratic equations, I figured we could practice doing the quadratic formula. So I just changed the number in the example to be 4, because if it were 2, it actually factors, and we know how to factor that. So our quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. Now our a is in front of the x squared, so that a is 3. Our b is in front of the x, so it's negative 4. And our c would be 5. So we have negative b, that would be a negative negative 4, which becomes a positive 4, plus or minus the square root. Negative 4 squared would be 16. 
minus 4 times a times c over 2a, which is 3. So I have 4 plus or minus 16. Negative 4 times 3 would be 12, and 12 times 5 is 60 over 6. And then I can subtract, so 4 plus or minus 16 minus 60 would be negative 44. Yep. Over 6. Now I can break this down. Square root negative 44. I can take out the negative, turn it into an I. And then 44 breaks down into 4 and 11. 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. 11 is just 11. So I can take out 2 and be left with square root 11. I'm taking out 2i, I'm left with square root 11. So this would be 4 plus or minus 2i square root 11 over 6. Now I can simplify this, but in order to simplify, all three numbers have to be divisible by the same thing. And the three numbers that I'm talking about are this number, the number outside of the radical, because you can't divide into the radical, so it's the coefficient outside of the radical and your number down below. So all three of these are divisible by 2. So I can divide each of them by 2 to simplify. So this would be 2 plus or minus i square root 11 over 3.